Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this thing on my head is a MetaQuest. And today, we're going to take a look at the MetaQuest viewer for SketchUp. So this particular headset right here is a MetaQuest 3. The viewer works for MetaQuest 2 or 3. This just happened to be what I had available to me today. Uh, so I'm going to be casting from this and recording it, and we're just going to kind of walk through the viewer. So right up front, I want to mention, this is, like I said, a, a couple times, a viewer. I'm not going to be modeling, so I'm not going to actually be like creating something. It is for looking at, exploring in, in real time, real size, real scale, your models. It is fully VR. It's not an AR viewer. It is a VR viewer, and it's going to allow you or your clients to jump in and actually experience your models, which is pretty amazing. We're going to take a look at it right now. All right, let's get the headset on, get my controls. I'm going to step back, and we're going to be in the viewer. So when you first come in here, one of the things you notice is you are totally inside this room. Uh, this is the, the home environment. This is where I explore my model from. Uh, and I get this home screen right here. I have some options on here. I do have the ability to go in and, and go to the Learn tab and see some videos. This video we're doing right now is just kind of an overview of how the viewer could work for you. Uh, we're not going to go in depth to every single command and how it all works. That is available, and it's available right here through the Learn screen if you want to want to jump in there and learn specifics. Um, what we're going to look at right now is right here is a list of our most recent models. I do have the ability to jump over to Trimble Connect. This, this actually functions very similar to SketchUp for iPad, if you've seen that, where I can jump to Trimble Connect versus looking at the models I recently worked on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab this Salem Village model. We're going to get a little dancing construction guy as it loads, and then we're going to get start with this scale model. So when it first comes in, it's on this floating table, and I can do a little bit of interaction with it. I can click on it with the controller, and I can move it around. Uh, I could move it up in the air so I can look underneath it. Obviously, this is not terribly exciting, but if I had something like, I don't know, a vehicle or something like that where there's something modeled under there, that might be kind of cool. Um, as I bring this model back down, you can see it'll snap to that table like that. This table height is definable. There's a preset for that, so I can set that whatever height I want. I can also grip it with two controls, and I can do things like scale it, rotate it, so if I want to see the other side, I could go like this, come around over here. Uh, you'll notice as you get real big, that table right there, it drops down to the ground, and I get into uh, this scale, which, again, it's not the actual scale it doesn't matter because I'm not going to be, you know, holding a scale up to my VR model or anything like that. But when I look at it in this scale, uh, which I would refer to as the Godzilla scale, um, I think this lets me view things in a way that, I can't view it in reality. Um, I guess if I had a jetpack or something that was flying around, I could see it like this, but uh, I can't move around it that quick. Unless you were to build a very large, very expensive scale model, it would be very hard to experience the model like this. So this is my favorite. I mean, we can do desktop, we can do tabletop where it's a smaller, like I said, 3D printed or, or car cardboard model. We'll look at immersive in just a second. Uh, but that, that big scale is probably my favorite way to experience. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into immersive real quick. And I'm gonna do this by just dropping myself in right here on the street. And now we are in one-to-one. -one. And in one-to-one, -one, I can look all around the model. I can see this as it would be. I can't, I can't move the model. I can't scale the model down at this point because I am in a one-to-one -one view. Uh, this is the exact scale. I can move myself though. So if I wasn't standing in the studio and had to be right here where I am, uh, I could actually use my real world legs, you know those things, to move around my model and I could, could go for a walk through this and look at that. If it was in a big enough space, I might be able to even walk around the building. Uh, in this particular space, like I said, I'm limited, so I can jump around just like I jumped into the model. I can use my control to just go, let's go stand over here. Hey folks. Uh, so with this, I can I can move around and I can actually look at the model. I can also, if I need to, if I'm limited, uh, obviously I could turn around, but then I'd show you guys the back of my head. So I can actually use my control to kind of flick and jump around the model here too, just kind of change my view. I can at any point bring up a menu, and the menu's going to have some controls on here, uh, some 
basic information, some of the info from your SketchUp model comes along and shows up in this viewer. So the, the bottom ones, I uh, have an outliner and tags. These just give me control of the outliner, just like you'd see it in SketchUp. And I can go, if I wanted to find information or, or, or find a specific thing, I could do that through the outliner. And then tags, of course, and let me turn things on and off visibility-wise. Uh, I'm not going to dive into that too deep, but they're there. Those And those are just the right out whatever you have in your SketchUp model shows up there. Uh, what I want to look at is the tape measure command because with tape measure is kind of cool. I could say, well, how, how far is it from here down to the ground right here? And it'll come up and tell me. And of course, you guys know I don't have good reference for millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit units preference, change it to feet and inches and see, okay, 11 and just about 11 and a half feet. A good reference image just if I don't have a good idea. Generally speaking, I could say, yeah, that's about, about two people's high. But yeah, I can verify. 11.5. One thing we are going to take a look at is scenes. Because again, like I said, this is a viewer. This is for you experiencing your model. Uh, scenes, of course, are a great way to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to this pavilion view. And it's going to take me up onto this, I think it's the third or fourth floor pavilion. And I can look up at the main tower. I can look around this pavilion. I can see this. This is an amazing way to experience model. And again, from here, I could walk using my real legs or I can use my control to, to flick around and spin around, look at geometry. Let's go look over the edge. Let's go, let's go hop over here and look at it right here. Change the bushes. You know, let's, let's do it. Let's stand up on the ledge. Woo. All right, so a couple stories up, but yeah, it looks like it's, it's doing the thing it's supposed to do. It makes me feel like I'm in the model. It's making me feel like I have, uh, you know, some stakes involved here if I want to get down. Uh, Let's go, let's go hop back down over here somewhere. All right, there we go. That feels slightly virtually safer, virtual safety. Anyhow, um, yeah, so, so scenes are, just like they're a good way to show off your model to a client or something like that on your desktop, they become even more essential and important for VR. So let's show you what I'm talking about. Um, so if I put this onto my customer, I want, him to, want them to experience this model, um, I could do that. I could pull this up and say, just click through some stuff. But there's this thing called presentation mode that I really like. When I click on presentation mode, it's going to give a limited UI. So I don't have scale or anything like that. I don't have to worry about that. I just come up with these scenes across here that they can click through. And it's super easy. I mean, take, take your thing, point it at a thing, and pull the trigger, and you're there. So this is my, my uh, Pavilion 2 view. And from here, they can look around, they can see the things they want. And then when they want to jump to the next one, they can just click on it like that. So a great way to observe. So like I said, it's nice to get in there and get immersive and move around. But if you're working with somebody who's not experienced with VR, doesn't know how to use controls real well, that kind of thing, this makes it super easy to guide them through your model. So in this case, uh, by clicking between this jewel, no jewel, you'll see I get a change, my a design option here between these jewel floors being here or being removed. So a really cool way to explore the model uh, without having to understand how scenes work or how to navigate using your controls or that kind of thing. So it's a nice option if you want to put your customer, your whatever, partner, whoever into an immersive view, but they don't have to learn the controls, which is really what this is all about. This is about going into your model, experiencing it. Again, as SketchUp designers, we can look at SketchUp all day and understand what we're modeling our customers, our partners, our stakeholders, whoever it may be, not necessarily going to be good at using Orbit or anything like that. Uh, so we have things like scenes. But with VR, we can drop them in the scenes and actually put them on a track to explore the most important parts of the model. So that is a quick look at the viewer for SketchUp. It is an amazing, amazing way to get to actually go into your model. And VR has never been more accessible than it is right now. The quests are, are super affordable. They work very easy. They don't need to hook up to a heavy duty computer or anything like that. Everything runs right on the headset. Uh, it's a great way to jump into VR. So if you've been waiting to like figure out when should I do that and you're a SketchUp designer, this is the time to do it because this makes it super easy, super quick, and it's it's kind of an enjoyable experience. Not, not all VR experiences are enjoyable, but this one seems to work pretty good. 
Uh, let me know. If you have a quest and you've tried this, let me know what you think of it. Tell us about it in the comments. If you have specific questions, something we didn't cover, go ahead and shoot those out there too. I'll do my best to answer, but uh, uh, if it gets too in-depth, we might have to hop over to the forum, but that's okay. Uh, and if nothing else, go ahead and click on like if you like this video and subscribe. We create lots of videos around here each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. And if you have another idea for a video, something that you think a way that we could go beyond desktop, let us know down in the comments as well. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.